Good morning and welcome to prayer and devotion on this Thursday, October 21st. Um, that was a hymn called The Summons by John L. Bell. And that was the Choose Christ 2020 Gathering album. So uh, I, I woke up this morning, I had a different song and I just switched it last minute. Um, it's a good one. Actually, it's a song that... Uh, our dancers will be dancing to on Sunday for our Laity Sunday. So, uh, and it goes really well with today's uh, time of of uh, reflection and devotion. So I'm glad you're here. Uh, welcome. Let me say good morning to all of you. Good morning, Barbara, and good morning, Myrna. It's good to have you both here, holding you in prayer this morning. Good morning, Megan, and good morning, Daniel. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Gail and Labake. Good morning, holding you in prayer this day. So I'm never sure if it's Israel or Labake who's on, but I'm, if you're both here, that's even better. So good morning, holding you in prayer this day. Uh, yes, um, Good morning, Georgiana and Priscilla. Welcome. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Genevieve and Michelle. Welcome holding you in prayer this morning. Good morning, Debbie. And good morning, Marilyn. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer today. And good morning, Minda. Welcome. Good morning, Georgiana. I'm glad you both are here holding you in prayer today. Good morning, Vinette and Renetta. Glad you're here holding you in prayer, Renetta. I hope you had a wonderful anniversary yesterday. Um, holding you both in prayer today. And good morning, Augusta and Susan. Welcome. Holding you in prayer as we start this day together. Good morning, Donna. And good morning, Susan. I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. Good morning, Celia. And good morning, Christiana. I'm glad you're here holding you both in prayer today. Good morning, Benson, and good morning, Vanessa. Welcome, holding you in prayer as we start our day together. And good morning, Margaret and Betty. Welcome, I'm glad you're here holding you in prayer. And good morning, Marion. Welcome, I'm glad you're here too, holding all of you in prayer as we start this day off together. It's good to be with, with you today. Um, so today we're going to be looking at Exodus. Um, and so we're going to look at two different parts of Exodus or two different chapters. One is um, chapter three and one is chapter four. Uh, so I'm going to tell you when to flip. So if you want to turn to Exodus um, chapter three, we're going to be talking about Moses. We're going to be talking about Moses' call and uh, God's call on our lives too which is why I started with the summons. So as you turn to Exodus 3, my name is Cindy Stauffer. I am blessed to serve as a pastor at the United Methodist Church at New Brunswick. Um, and we are located on the corner of George and Liberty in the heart of New Brunswick. And um, yeah, I'm so glad you're here today. Let's take a look. Um, so, so our devotion comes from Paul David Tripp's book, uh, no, uh, new morning mercies, new, not, definitely more, they're morning mercies. So not, no, no, anyway, forget it. New morning mercies. It is good. To, uh, <laughs> but 
Thursday. Sorry. So um, he starts off today's devotion with these words. He says, no need to fear what God will ask of you. Because in the asking is always the promise of grace to empower your heart and your hands. So one more time, no need to fear of what God will ask of you because in the asking is always the promise of grace to empower your hearts, your heart and your hands. So I'm going to start off our devotion and then I'm going to jump into the Exodus passage, which I know is a little different than what we normally do, but hang with me. So this is what he says, consider God's call to Moses to lead the Israelites out of their cruel captivity in Egypt. In Moses's reply, we see a reflection of our, our frequent response when God asks something of us. And so I'm starting in Exodus 3, 7. Then the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction of my people who are in Egypt and have heard their cry because of their taskmaster, task masters. I know their sufferings and I have come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land a land flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the, per the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. And now, behold, the cry of the people of Israel has come to me, and I have seen the oppression with which the Egyptians oppress them. Come, and I will send you to Pharaoh, that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh um, and bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? He said, but I will be with you. And this shall be a sign for you that I have sent you. When you've brought the people out of Egypt, you shall serve God on this mountain. Now I'm jumping over to uh, Exodus 4. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I am not eloquent, either in the past or since you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Who has made man's mouth? Who makes him mute or deaf or seeing or blind? Is it not I, the Lord? Now therefore go, and I will be your mouth and teach you what you shall speak. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send someone else. Throughout this amazing encounter with the Lord, Moses does what we often do as we evaluate what God has put on our plates and how he has called us to respond. Moses admits the ultimate fact that he changes everything about the way we think and should respond to God's call. That fact is not the difficulty of the calling or your perceived ability to answer the call. It is not the size of the situation or the size of your wisdom and strength. This life-changing fact is that the God of glory and grace, who calls his people to do his will on earth, always goes with them as they obey his calling. He never sends without going to. When he sends you, he doesn't give you a bunch of stuff. I'm sorry. He, when he sends you, he doesn't give you a bunch of stuff to help you along the way. He always gives you himself because God is what you need and God alone can give you what is required. When Moses finally says, oh my Lord, please send someone else. 
It is clear that he does not understand the present power of his identity as a child of God. Because he is God's chosen child, he is never, ever alone. Because he is God's child, God will never send him on a task by himself. Hope for Moses' success is not to be found in his personal strength and wisdom. I'm going to say it again. The hope for Moses' success is not to be found in his personal strength and wisdom, but in the expansive glory of the one who sent him. Remember today that when God sends, God goes to. Amen. Every single week, well, I mean, I want to say every week. It's usually every week. I end with a similar benediction at church, just like I have a similar thing, I, something I say when I say goodbye to all of you. But every week, I, I end with this benediction. I say, here is the good news, that as you go, you do not go alone, that the God of grace the God of mercy, I don't know, I lift different, different God, the God of justice, the God of love goes with you. And that is the good news. I mean, the good news is that we have a God that loves us so much that he came and walked where we walk. We have a God that so wants our redemption, that so wants us um, to live in the kingdom, God's kingdom, that he came, he lived, he experienced what we experience, and worse. He was rejected, denied, betrayed, and eventually killed. But that wasn't the end of the story either. Through that God, he showed us the way to eternal life, that death is not the end. Um, and so when God calls us to places, our tendency is always to feel like we're not enough. I don't have enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not charismatic enough. Um, I, I don't, I don't um, have the words that need to be spoken. I'm worried that I'll fail. People won't listen to me. I won't have enough money to do it. I don't have enough time to do it. I mean, we, we had a whole raft of excuses why we don't follow. We have a whole raft of excuses why we don't follow. Um, but, and we see even at the end of today's passage, what does Moses say? Send someone else, God. Don't send me. I am not enough. And if Moses, the one who is the father of, of our faith, and so Abraham and Moses, I mean, they led the way. If he was saying, send someone else, like, we're in good company, friends. But Moses went. He went. And he trusted that God's word would speak and that he wouldn't go alone and that God would give him what he needed. And the same is for us. Most of the time, I do not know what I'm doing. Most of the time. And I'm much better when I am do not know because then I have to trust. Now that doesn't mean we don't educate ourselves. I'm going back into another six hour seminar today on outward mindset. I mean, we do, but, but Ultimately, we take the step out because we trust that in stepping, God is there and that in stepping, God will empower and in stepping, God will give us the words and in stepping, God will give us the courage. A lot of it is courage. And that in stepping, we are not alone. And that is so important. Thank you, Marilyn. I'm glad you have your blue bracelet. I wish I could get some more of those. Um, uh, you are not alone. You are not alone. 
And so today, that is, that's all you've got to hold on to today. As you walk through your day, it's what you should hold on to every day, but I give you something different every day. Today, as you walk into places where you're not sure where you're going, or as you encounter relationships that maybe need healing, I, I want you to hold on to the knowledge that you do not step into those places alone, that the God of grace the God of mercy, the God of justice, the God who, who um, empowers and enlightens, the God of love will go with you. So let us pray. God, we come before you today acknowledging that too often we have been like Moses. Send someone else. I don't have the time, Lord. Send someone else. I'm not good enough, Lord. Send someone else. I don't have the words or the ability or the charisma or the strength. Send someone else, Lord. But then you give us a moment to pause, to remember that even Moses felt that and Abraham and all of God's people, even Mary at some point, <laughs> the mother of our Savior, asked a question. But all of them were faithful, not because they had, they believed in their own self, but they, that they believed that you would go with them. And so, so go with us. No. Help us to remember that you go with us. We thank you, Lord, for loving us this much. We thank you, Lord, for the strength when we think we have nothing left. We thank you for the wisdom when our minds feel dull. <laughs> we thank you for patience with one another when it seems like there is nothing left. We need you. And so remind us again and again and again and again this day that we are not alone as we step out to be your people, to build your kingdom, to be co-creators of um, what, the, what this world should look like, that your kingdom may come not just in heaven, but here on earth. We ask all of this, Lord Jesus, as together we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So my friends, you are not alone. Today, as we step out into this day, hold on to that firm promise. You are not alone. God loves you, my friends, and so do I. Um, Karen is going to be with you tomorrow. And then um, I wanted to let you know that on Saturday, um, we are hosting... Um, the church, I mean, we're not running it, but we're hosting a domestic violence uh, march and rally out in front of the church. And um, I'm going to be part of that as well. So uh, I invite you to come. It's between uh, like 10 and 2. But, you know, if you get there at 11, I think the march starts at 11. And then there's a rally and food afterwards. Um, so I, I hope you can be a part of that. I think it is so important 
um, not only to connect in the community, but to connect in, in in things that are, that are, you know, speaking up and making a difference. Um, so hopefully, uh, you can join us for that. That's on Saturday. And, um, I will be with you on Saturday, but, uh, Sunday is laity Sunday. Yay. Love my lady. And so they're going to be leading worship, uh, on Sunday. So I will see you back here on Saturday morning. Have a very blessed day, my friends. You are not alone. Bye, friends.